Greetings, YBH students. Um, today, or maybe of course in one or two days, we will uh, be taking a little bit of a deviation along our path of history and uh, discord this taking a digression into the events of 122 years ago, which happened this week, which is the declaration of war in the Spanish-American War. And I'm going to show you a little video about the event, which was the press, the antecedent. Antecedent is a good word to remember. A N T E C E D E N T. I don't know if I have my trusted index cards here. I do my trusted pen, and I have an index card, but I don't want to use this index card. Let's find we have another index card we can use. Yeah, there's one. Antecedent, A N T E C E D E N T. That means the event which led up to. Make sure to write that down. The Spanish American War. Make sure to write, and write that down too. Which well, began with the event of the seeking of the Maine in the Havana Harbor. And there was a rallying cry for the Spanish American War, which was Remember the Maine. M A I N E, as in the state of Maine. And that battle cry was that ostensibly. Ostensibly is a good word too. Ostensibly means purportedly, which is also a good word. Purportedly, my we're having fun today. Purportedly, which means something which you there it goes something which you assume may be true, but it's not necessarily true. Hmm. Let's get the focus a little bit better. So ostensibly, purportedly, those are synonyms. Make sure you have them down. So ostensibly and purportedly, the main was sunk by a Spanish mine. The Spanish Empire was then in control of, on our side of the world, Cuba, way on the other side of the world, the Philippines, and uh, in fact, a little bit closer there in, although they were semi-independent, actually, um, no, I'm not gonna say that because it's not right. I'm sorry, I was about to say anything wrong. Unfortunately, I say it myself. But uh, the Philippines, which were also prominent at the time. Now, before we see that video, let me tell you that this was, in fact, a war which was fought in by Jews to a much greater, greater proportion than we would think of today as being even part of any American army at the time. And let me read you a fact from, from uh, Jewish heroes and heroines in America. From colonial times to 1900, when the battleship Maine was sunk on February 15, 1898, there were 15 Jewish sailors who went down with the ship. The executive officer of the Maine and later vice admiral uh, um, in the United States Navy was Adolf Marix, he, uh, a, a Jew. Now, Adolf Marix, interestingly enough, was the first Jew. Oh, let's see where I have the open tab on him here. The first Jew to graduate from the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. He graduated just after the second, uh, first, after the Civil War in 1868. And uh, he was uh, undoubtedly the first American Jewish admiral in the Navy as well. And uh, he was on the main, the ship which uh, sunk. And he was later to lead a board of inquiry into the singing of the main to find out what happened. Now, let's make sure we understand. The American media, which, as Donald Trump would say, was uh, always full of fake news, was led by uh, the Hearst newspapers. The Hearst newspapers were run by a fellow named William Randolph Hearst, who liked, to believe it or not, to make money by selling... Oops. So, We'll come back to that song later on. We like to take him to make money by selling newspapers. So he actually impressed upon the public that it was surely the Spanish word for him, but the thinking of the main, and nobody else. And therefore, since that was the case, we had to go to war. In fact, many people believe that actually the main was probably sunk not by a Spanish mine in the har harbor of Havana, but actually by a fire on the ship. So it's not all clear. Um, but as I said, uh, um, Adolf Marx was 
the chairman of the board of inquiry to to find out why the mains sunk. And it's interesting to you know that his father was an interpreter in the Lincoln administration. It was Abraham Lincoln who pointed out of Marist, the United States Naval Academy. I don't know if you know this, but again, there's something worth knowing. To get to go to West Point or Annapolis or any of the, Ameri the American military ways, you have to be appointed either by a congressperson, a senator, or by the president. So you have to be appointed by somebody who sends you there. Um, now, when the United States declared war against Spain on April 21st, 1898, that is tomorrow. Today is Monday, tomorrow, Tuesday. Then the first volunteer was Colonel Joseph M. Heller, who left a thriving medical practice to become an assistant surgeon in the army. As we said, about 5,000 Jews served in the war. When the Jewish high holidays were approaching 1898, there were 4,000 requests for furloughs to attend services. I wonder how many of them actually were granted. As you might remember, during the Civil War, uh, the uh, very few furloughs were granted for Jews to go to services. But maybe by 1898 things were different than they were in 1861. There were indeed three Jewish army officers and 20 more in the Navy. These are officers, not enlisted men. Enlisted men, there are about 5,000, but there are officers and the Army and the Navy, all together 50, 30 in the Army, and 20 in the Navy in the Spanish-American War. Jewish casualties ran high for the percentage of Jews in the service. 29 were killed, 47 wounded, and 28 died for, from disease, for a total of 104. The Colonel Ben Prager received the Silver Star Medal for his bravery in the Philippines in 19 skirmishes and engagements. The official citation describes his accomplishments. When the engagement was fully opened up, Colonel Benjamin Prager and seven other soldiers from companies A and L 19th and 19th United States Infantry moved out and charged the enemy. After, and after twice charging in the face of heavy fire, succeeded in dislodging the enemy and putting the entire force to rout. Another good word for us to know. R R let's write of course do like this. R O U T. It's, doesn't look right to me, but I think you probably can figure if you see it. R O U T route means when when an enemy is routed, it means they have been destroyed and they're on the run. Okay? So make sure you know that word. So going back here, with true soldierly spirit, the success followed up and the enemy was driven out of the city with the uh, across the river and the mountains. Now Colonel, Colonel Teddy Roosevelt, who rose to fame and therefore was quick, quickly was on course to become the Vice President of the United States and the President of the United States, my favorite President, Theodore Roosevelt, um, uh, commanded the Rough Riders, and we'll learn more about that in the course of the coming days, which included a large number of Jews. The first Rough Rider killed was a 16-year-old Jewish boy, Jacob Wilbusky. Colonel Roosevelt wrote of five men in his command for the bravery in the field uh, without knowledge of their religion. One of them was a Jew. As we may or may not continue in the course of these next few days, um, Roosevelt actually was the first American president to appoint a Jew to his cabinet. That was a big thing at the time. We'll come, again, if we have time, we'll come back to that. Sergeant Maurice jo Joost, uh, the first California volunteer, a volunteer as a regiment that had more than 100 Jewish soldiers, was the first man to form the attack on Manila. Manila is the capital of the Philippines. Come back to that also. There are 280,000 American soldiers in this war, which is four tenths of one percent of that population. Jewish soldiers were one half of one percent of the Jewish American Jewish population. Therefore, Jews served in greater proportion than, than the remainder of the nation's citizens. In the Spanish American War, Jews once again demonstrated that they're willing to fight and serve in the defense of our country. Now, um, before I show you the brief video about the main itself, remember I remember uh, I told you about William Randolph Hearst. I want to stress that William Randolph Hearst was the owner of the major firm uh, uh, of newspapers in America, and he was the one who promoted the uh, the war. And we'll perhaps come back to him later as well. I have too many tabs open on my computer to find quickly. Oh yes, uh, no, I was mistaken about that. Good thing I checked. The actually was found by. Joseph Pulitzer, William Hunt of Horse was later. Joseph Pulitzer, from the Pulitzer Prize is named, which goes to the uh, most accomplished American journalists every year, um, <laughs> had a headline in one of his newspapers, uh, How Do You Like the Journal's War? Because evidently uh, he took credit for having got brought on the war. And Joseph Pulitzer, 
It's important enough that we should know his name, and therefore we should write him down because the prize given in his name is still is given every year again to the best journalists in the country. Joseph Pulitzer of the Pulitzer Prize. Joseph Pulitzer, P U L I T Z R E R. Okay, so now let us go to the um, video about the main. Actually, let me just finish up uh, before we get, get to go to the video. The main that the war lasts for about 10 weeks, but about um, um, American imperial control, which is an interesting term to use about America because we don't think of America as an empire. But actually, this was the American time when America played empire in taking control of the territories across the globe, including Cuba, Puerto Rico, Guam, where, and which is still news today. As you know, there is a uh, ever carrier. I think it's the Theodore Roosevelt, actually. Named after Theodore Roosevelt, which uh, which is uh, now in quarantine in Guam. And current events, you might have heard that uh, the Senate, the uh, acting Secretary of the Navy, fired the uh, the commander of the Th Theodore Roosevelt, and he himself had to resign. This is a big brouhaha in the news today. Well, Guam is where the Theodore Roosevelt that was in quarantine because of coronavirus in the Philippines, and they effectively ended the Spanish American War, ended the Spanish Empire. Okay, with all those facts which we have till now, watch this brief film and write down some facts which we'll see about the main. And then we'll come back to you either later today, probably not, probably be more tomorrow. But make sure to take notes. In late January 1898, one of America's newest battleships, the USS Maine, sailed into Havana Harbor as a show of support for Cuban revolutionaries. But on February 15th, the USS Maine suddenly blew up in Havana Harbor. 266 men were killed. It was claimed a Spanish mine was responsible, but in truth, the most likely cause was a fire in a coal bunker. The American press, however, demanded revenge. Remember the Maine became the battle cry. This led to President McKinley declaring war on the Spanish Empire to liberate Cuba from the Spanish yoke and also to give the Americans the opportunity to have a go at a Spanish position in the Pacific. The United States Asiatic Squadron was led by 60-year-old Admiral George Dewey. Dewey's fleet of nine ships sailed for the Philippines. Waiting for them off the coast of the capital, Manila, was the elderly Spanish fleet, commanded by Rear Admiral Don Patricio Montojo y Passeran. Spanish Admiral Montijo realized that his force of colonial cruisers, many of them built of wood, quite obsolete with short-range weapons, would be completely outclassed by the Americans. So he put them as close to the shore as possible so that when they sank, the crew might have a chance of getting ashore. On the early morning of May 1st, 1898, the Olympia led Dewey's fleet into Manila Bay with her four eight-inch guns mounted on turrets, 10 five-inch guns for broadsides, and 21 smaller 15-caliber guns. The flagship was an impressive sight. And unlike his predecessors, Dewey didn't have to worry about the wind. Steam power offered him a variety of tactics. As he comes into Manila Bay, Dewey has a choice. He can either anchor up opposite the Spanish fleet and just exchange fire with them until he wins, or he can reduce the risk to his own ships by keeping underway and making his ships a more difficult target for the Spanish gunners. Fire! His ships open fire and then circle around and open fire again. They just bombard the Spanish. Manila Bay has been described simply as a gun duel. Manila Bay is one of the last battles of the 19th century. There are no submarines, there are no airplanes, there are no soldiers. It really is just a fight between two fleets. After a battle lasting six hours, with many of his ships sinking but still firing, Admiral Montojo surrendered. The Spanish fleet had been shot to pieces, half it had sunk, and the rest of it was of not much further use. 330 men died on the Reina Cristina, and 90 were wounded. The wooden Castilla caught fire and sank with the loss of 25 men. The Olympia, however, sailed for Manila, with the ship's band playing Spanish tunes 
for the locals who'd come to stare at the victorious fleet.